Well, we're back on the uh, T-Bird today. Uh, I'm gonna get the rockers lashed, add some distilled water to the cooling system, and uh, fill it up with some fuel. I'm also gonna have to charge the battery so I can get the thing to start. So bear with me. Uh, there's not a lot to do. There's not a lot of stuff that you can actually see, and it shouldn't take too long. Um, maybe we'll go through my T-Bird handbook that I have kind of assembled with all the stuff that I had. Um, so you can check things out. All right, well, we're on to the T-Bird handbook. I just kind of a trip down memory lane for me. Um, here's probably one of the events I was at for maybe Match Race Madness. I'm not sure. There's a test run. We're in a 629 at 107.8 miles an hour in the eighth mile. Uh, 60 foot time looks like it was 136. But uh, she does all right. It's not too bad. These, but here's a stack of these time slips. There's a bunch of them in there. There's probably ranges from 620s to 640s to maybe even 650s. I don't even remember. Um, here was the build list for all the stuff for the motor. There's like actually two different receipts in there. I had this motor done by a guy named Tim Zepp that was, uh, he won the, let's see, he won the, uh, oh, Engine Masters building cleavers for a couple of years there around 2010-11. Um, here is the Dynograph sheet, right? So, where is this thing? 600 and, yeah, well, this one was 649.2 horsepower at 6,100. And then, let's see, peak torque occurred around, oh, 5,400, I guess, somewhere around there, 590 foot-pounds of torque. Here's what the graph looked like, blah, blah, blah. Uh, here's the handwritten stuff, um, but uh, it's pretty much just the basic things on how to keep, how to do maintenance on the engine, what you need to do. Um, I, it's the only one I never really assembled it myself. Um, I really just did, uh, uh, there's an old dress for me. But uh, yeah, that a lot of this stuff was just due to, it took me eight years to put it together and it's because I kept getting deployed. I was deployed uh, four times in five years, right? And so I can safely say that I had someone put this one together for me because I could not, I could not find the time. There's no way I could have done this. It took me eight years to get to get it together, and I did the, I didn't even do the motor. So it just took a long time, and I mean the chassis work. I took it to a place called Coast Chassis Designs in Florida, um, but that's where we're working with now. So. Um, we'll get the valves lashed, we'll get the, uh, dump some water in it, and cooling system and charge, or I, I'm sorry, add some fuel and get the battery charged up, or the batteries. Um, also, I'm going to jack it up and, and check things out underneath real quick, but uh, I wanted to swap one of the O2 sensors from one side to the next to see if it made any difference. So hang around, we've got some more to come. Okay, so progress on the T-Bird. So far, I got all the valves lashed. It takes a little while because you got to turn it over and, and get it to certain sequences in the uh, firing events. But uh, I eventually got them all. It's taken me about an hour and a half um, to lash the valves. And each one of them, if you see how I do this, is like I, I find the ones that are on uh, the base circle of the camshaft. And then I do those. Um, and each time I do one, I put a little dot on the rocker arm with a uh, dry erase marker. Um, that way I know which ones I've done and which ones I haven't. So once I get them on the base circle of the cam and I set the lash on them and I tighten it down, I put the dot on there and eventually you'll get all 16 rocker arms. I got have, I have both sides done. Um, so that's the big one. Uh, I'll also add in some water, some distilled water and some fuel. Um, Right now I got the T-Bird on the battery charger and it's been sitting for five years. It's got these uh, yellow top Optimas, uh, they're deep cycle batteries, but it's been sitting for a long, long time. It's down at 25% when I first started was about 10. So it is gonna take, I bet, every bit of four hours to charge those batteries. They are in a parallel setup, just like a, just like a diesel truck. So race cars, you know, um, they take a lot of current generally to turn them over. And this is an EFI uh, combination. So it's got two fuel pumps. And so those two fuel pumps plus the EFI plus the ignition plus everything else, it requires an alternator and a hell of a lot of juice to run everything. But uh, 
That's why it has two batteries. And also, I did that because if you wanted to go bracket racing and go quite a few rounds, you don't have a lot of time to charge in between uh, rounds. And with two batteries, um, it cuts that time in half. And generally it uses about half as much as what it would normally use um, just under regular load. So I could have got away with one battery most likely, but uh, this too makes it pretty much ready to go uh, whenever I hit the key, even if I only got a few minutes between rounds to charge, especially when you get in later rounds. Uh, for bracket racing, they, there's less time in between each individual round. So uh, the more focus is on cooling. Uh, the other thing is, this is a Flexalite electric fan probably from like 2000. It's not what you would call super efficient. <laughs> it's literally, it runs and it moves some serious air, but gosh, is it power hungry. So that was, uh, that's the deal behind this. Now I'm gonna top up some water and uh, charge the batteries up, put the valve covers back on and add some fuel. We'll almost be ready to fire this thing up. All right, so here's something interesting I found. I figured I'd let everybody see. Uh, when you're doing a race car, it, this is a Fox body platform, right? So that means it's a unibody. Um, they're not very known for their stiffness. They're, in the early days of racing the five liter Mustangs, there was a lot of them that had a wrinkled quarter panel. And it was because they're dumping the clutch at seven, eight grand, uh, getting these things to run. But it would, because the body would flex so bad, it would wrinkle up the quarter panels and the, the sail pillars, but, uh, or the sail panels. But, um, Here's something for you. Okay, so I got the floor jack here. It's on the, the frame at the front of the car. All right, this will give you an idea of how, how uh, I guess, rigid this thing is now. Okay, I've listed the, the car up, put a jack stand under it, and I noticed this. Uh, yeah, that's the whole back, uh, the rest of the back of the car off the ground. There's about two inches there underneath the rear tire. So if you want to know how stiff she is with the chromoly cage, that's how stiff it is. Okay, as they say in YouTube today, bruh, she's stiff. So here we go. The first hopefully successful fire of the T-Bird in four years, I guess. Let's see what happens. I've already primed the fuel system, so it should light right off. 